One up, Murray. Obviously, Marvin Johnson has the great experience, and maybe is the young, aspiring light heavyweight who wants so desperately to make a name for himself. Handled by Dennis Rappaport, who obviously has a big name reputation. Uh, you, you think this thing has a chance of going 15 rounds? I very much doubt it, but th I called the last fight, and you've seen what happened. So, both of these guys are repute, re have reputation as punchers. There's no way in my mind that this fight can go 15 rounds. Okay, let's go up to our ring announcer now and get the introductions of the two fighters as we brace ourselves for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, the feature of the evening, the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, scheduled for 15 rounds. Introducing the challenger in the blue corner, weighing 174 pounds, wearing blue trunks with a red stripe. His record is 24 and two from the Cameroons, West Africa, John Marie Imibi. In the red corner, weighing 174 and one half pounds, wearing white trunks with a black stripe, with a record of 42 and five, the three-time world light heavyweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin. Johnson. Well, it's not difficult to tell who the crowd favorite is. Marvin Johnson, born, raised, lives, works, eats, breathes, everything in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is his hometown crowd, but he will have his hands full tonight. John Maria Mebe, a very hungry young man from the Cameroon in Africa, fighting out of Paris, France. It is Amoebe in the blue trunks and Marvin Johnson in the white trunks and Johnson gets a wild left in the opening seconds of the first round. That's one thing Johnson is not reputed for, his feeling out process. But the bell goes and he decides it's time to fight. And that's exactly what he's doing. Try to take advantage of perhaps Amoebe being a little disoriented with all the hoopla. This may be the biggest fight of Amoebe's life. It certainly is for the most prestige of anything he's ever fought for. In a strange land, a strange environment, and all the circumstances, Murray, that surround it. Yes, he doesn't even speak the language too good, uh, Sam. He is going to be nervous. He's going to be edgy, at least for the first round. But as any fighter knows, that after the first round, after the bell goes for the first round, you lose a lot of your butterflies. Things start coming together easier. It may not look it at the camera angle that you are seeing now, but Amoebe, when standing upright, has a couple of inches height advantage over Marvin Johnson, the champion. And Johnson has such an incredible story to tell. Two minutes to go here in the first round. I only hope the fight lasts long enough so that we can unravel all of the very interesting background move right on the nose. Johnson with a short left hand, but it didn't phase Amoebe at all, who countered with a left and right to the body. Both young men have such incredible stories to tell, but Johnson, such an unbelievable, he is one of only two men of the history of the sport of boxing to hold a title three times. He has never successfully defended the light heavyweight championship. He won it, then lost it in the very next fight. He won it again and lost it on the very next fight. He has now won it for a third time, and this is his first title defense, and he has tried to do something he's never done before. But he makes no bones about the fact that at the age of 32, and after 13 years as a professional, the only thing he's fighting for is money. He wants a big payday, Murray, and you certainly must know what that's like. Yes, the only way you get big paydays is if you hold a title. That's the only reason. We will stay here as we did in the first fight between the first two rounds. Just get a feel of what the uh, fighters are feeling, what they look like up close, and what their handlers are saying to them. The telling punch from Johnson, Sam, is going to be his left, I'll call it an uppercut. It's, it's like a left hook, but it's an uppercut at the same time. Very, very powerful punch. He has uh, dropped a number of his opponents with this punch. Very short, like a 45-degree angle type uppercut. The only rules that differ from the WBA and the USBA that you really need to know at the moment are the three knockdown rules. In the fight you saw just a few moments ago, they waived the three knockdowns. And in this particular fight, the three knockdowns are in effect. The fighter goes down three times in one round, and the fight is over. Under 10 seconds to go, and as I said, we'll stay here. The feeling out process has ended for the first round. And a standing ovation for Johnson, as there will be most of the fight. 
after each round, trying to uh, exhort him on. Let's go back to the corner now of the light heavyweight champion, Marvin Johnson. Stay close with your hand over here. What are you doing? Turn your body all the way. Nice and cool. This guy's shit. This guy's shit. This guy. This guy. The circle also, I think. Nice and cool. Nice and cool. That's straight. Keep moving. Don't straight. Don't get straight. Why is he going to throw more left hand? So give him a little faith. Okay, Murray, let's look at a couple of these uh, shots by Marvin Johnson early on. Johnson scored some beautiful left hands. Boom, right there. He scored two or three of them right near the end of the round, just as the bell was sounding. Is it a cut they're working on above his right arm? Yes, we were noticing in between rounds, the cut man for Marvin Johnson was working feverishly. There's a cut developed on the, over the right eye of Marvin Johnson. You can see the blood already on the front of the shots. There you can see Amibi with a three-inch height advantage. Weight almost identical, obviously, a 175-pound weight limit. Amibi, 30 years old, Marvin Johnson, 32. Amibi a little on in his life. Perhaps to be trying to gain some notoriety, but uh, he has fought in rather uh, unknown circles, having fought in Europe, and has changed his style dramatically. Was basically that stand-up classic European uh, fighter until he came and got into the hands of uh, Victor Valley and Dennis Rappaport. And what have they done to, to, uh, to change his style? He have changed his style to the extent that coming from uh, Africa and from Paris, he had what we call the European stand-up type boxing style. Very upright, very unprotected, taking a lot of punches when he's backing up. We've got him adapted now to what we call the American style. A lot more bobbing and weaving, a lot more body punches, hands held higher. That is basically lots of side-to-side -side movements. On. Two minutes to go in the second round. We are scheduled for 15 here at the Market Square Arena, and both are exchanging some wicked body punches. Amibi just working on the body of Marvin Johnson. Johnson has to be concerned with that cut. It's the opening round. He knows he's got 14 long rounds to go, and he has already a cut in the first round. It's got to change his fight plan to a certain extent. Murray, we made a big deal all through this evening leading up to this fight about the fact that you're the only man who has really whipped Jean Maria Mebe. How did you do it, and what would you suggest for Marvin Johnson? Johnson has got to do what I do, pressure. That's the only way to beat a John Mebe. If you back up and give him fighting room, he is going to walk all over you because he's so strong. He is the strongest guy I've ever fought. And Johnson's got to do what he's doing right now, is trying to back him up, smother him with punches. What did you knock him out with? A series of punches, actually. It was accumulation of a good right hand lead with a couple of left, left hooks. Oh, good right hand by Amibi. Another good right hand. This has been a very, very strong for a round for Amibi. Under a minute to go in the second round. He has done some damage here on Johnson, not only in the body, but he has let a couple of wicked whites go that have grazed the side of the head of Marvin Johnson. What's happening, what's happened now, Sam, is Amibi came into the fight intimidated. He's fighting a world champion. It's got to play on your mind. After you hit him a few times, you say, hey, this guy's human. I can hit him. And this is what's happened to him now. He's discovered that he can punch the world champion, and he's now taken the fight to Johnson. Under 30 seconds to go. We alert our local stations. We'll be taking a break with you after round number two. And this has already got the makings of a great, great fight. Amibi just seems to be muscling Johnson. Hit him with a good right uppercut. Under 10 seconds to go in the round. A very strong round for Jean-Marie Amibi. We'll return after this word from your local station. We are back live. Sam Nover and Murray Sutherland ringside at the Market Square Arena. This is a WBA light heavyweight championship. Marvin Johnson coming out strong with a couple of left hands. And Amibi got to spit some fluid out of his mouth right at Johnson. The chant was going off just prior to the start of the second, the third round, Sam. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. This crowd is behind Johnson 100%. They are wired here in Indianapolis, but they have been here before and seen some of the great moments in Johnson's career and some of the rather uh, infamous moments, so to speak. It was in this very arena four or five years ago when he lost to, at the time, was Matt Franklin, who later became Matthew Saad Muhammad. That was one of the all-time wars I have ever seen in boxing. Did he not win the title back from Leslie Stewart here as well? Correct. He has held it for a third time. 
And he is trying desperately for the first time in his career to successfully defend his title. Two minutes to go in round three, scheduled for 15. And at the pace they began this fight, Murray, they would appear to have no chance in making 15. I don't think either fighter has any intention in his mind of going 15 rounds. Johnson is the pressure type of fighter. He is going to fight like that from bell one to bell 15 if it takes that long. But I don't think either one of those guys have any intention to go in 15 rounds. And the kind of punches they're throwing that any one of those punches could take the other guy out. Midway through the third round, Marvin Johnson, 47 professional fights. He's won 42, 37 then by knockout. John Maria Mebe, 26 and 2, 20 knockouts. Lost one by disqualification and lost another on a knockout by the gentleman seated to my right and my broadcast partner for tonight's card, Murray Sutherland. And maybe your observations on Amibi as the fight progresses, whether or not he, does he gain in strength? Does he lose? What, 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 what has been the, the modus operandi, so to speak, of John Amibi? The, the only fight I've ever seen him fight, uh, Sam, was when he was standing right in front of me. And that night, we see some terrific action here. Oh, fighting. tremendous left and right by Amibi. Johnson missing with the left, and Amibi just cuffing him with the right hand. Again, we'll take a local break coming up here after the third round. Amibi with a left and then a good right uppercut, a double uppercut. Johnson has had Amibi pinned against those ropes for the last 30 seconds, but Amibi has felt comfortable there. He's been fighting back and catching Johnson and just caught him there with another good right hand. Under 15 seconds to go in the third round. It has been an outstanding first three rounds. And we'll return to the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis after this word from your local station. Amibi scores so well off the ropes with right hands and beautiful left hooks. Johnson has him there for, a, for 20 seconds or so, but Amibi was doing all the good work. We are back live. This is the fourth round, and as they have done for the first three, they have met immediately in the center of the ring and begun to exchange punches. Amibi with a good right hand backs Johnson up. John Maria Meeby in the blue trunks. The WBA light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson in the white trunks. And a Meeby with tremendous amount of upper body strength. Digging hard to the side of Marvin Johnson. Now a Meeby being warned by referee Luis Rivera that that one was a little bit lower than just the side. That's where that bobbing and weaving of the American style comes in handy, uh, Sam. Before, he was a very upright, tight fighter, and that movement didn't come natural to him. He's been working with Victor Valley. He has that movement, and he's avoiding a lot of punches now. You must be looking into my mind, Murray Sutherland. I oh, good John left hand by Johnson. Johnson he missed with a round left hook there. Beautiful left hand. Two minutes to go in the fourth round. I was just going to say that Amibi was not accustomed naturally to that bobbing and weaving, weaving, but he has learned it very well. Straight right by Johnson, and Amibi walked right into it. Luis Rivera working this WBA light heavyweight championship fight, and he's an excellent referee. He has taken control immediately, and he'll give each fighter a very mean look if he doesn't like what they're doing in terms of following the rules of the sport. And believe me, Luis was a bad fighter in his time as well. <laughs> Fought 10 rounds with Vito Antifermo. Boy, the infighting in this one is just tremendous. The body punches. I know you've heard the expression a thousand times, Murray, and so is our audience, but you kill the body and the head will die. A minute to go on the round, and Johnson has a meeting right over our Bud Sports microphone. And the crowd reacting accordingly. They are on their feet in parts of this building. Maybe he's making a bad mistake right now. He's dropping his hands. He's, you watch when he gets against the ropes, his hands come down. And that is a bad mistake when you're fighting Johnson. We will take a local break here at the end of round four. Marvin Johnson with a very, very good round, but he knows he's in a war. Amibi with a short right hand underneath. Beautiful left, straight left hand by Johnson. That is Johnson's best punch. Amibi with an excellent combination. Three or four, five punches right in front of us here. And they are standing toe to toe. 10 seconds to go to the round. This has been a superb fight. We'll return to the Market Square Arena for round number five after this word from your local stations. Come on. 
more than just an interested bystander. Jerry Cooney coming from the same stable that handles Jean Maria Meeby. Specifically, his uh, manager, Dennis Rappaport, and his trainer, Victor Valley. And very, very interested in how Amibi does here. This is round five. We're scheduled for 15, and both have exploded here in the first four rounds. Amibi is starting to... I don't know how to describe it, but he's not using as much head movement as he did in the first two rounds. And you've got to do that with Johnson. He's starting to resort... There was a good elbow there by Amibi. He's starting to resort back to that European style of just standing there pawing with his left hand, leaving himself open, open for punches. Did you not tell Marvin Johnson yesterday that Amibi stood right there in front of your face for the entire nine rounds? The fight that I fought him in previously, two and a half years ago, yes. He was like a big statue standing right in front of me. Most of the time, he was laying on me. <laughs> and Johnson said if he does that against me, he won't be there for very long. That's correct. Two minutes to go in the fifth round. Boy, it's been a long struggle for Jean Marie Amibi to get here. Born in the Cameroon 30 years ago, moved to Paris some 13 years ago, picked up recently by his new management team, has actually might even be guilty of having overtrained for this fight. Began training back in April. Johnson with a good one-two punch right on the button of Amibi. As I started to say, Amibi's been training for this fight since April. It was postponed. He's scheduled for June in Bermuda. And uh, he says he's watched hundreds of hours of Marvin Johnson. He could write a book on him. He said yesterday, as you recall, Sam, that he knows Marvin Johnson better than Marvin Johnson. He did indeed. He did indeed. But knowing him and beating him may be two different things. This is true. And like you referred to earlier, there is a chance he could be overtrained because not that he has trained for all those months, but it's been on his mind psychologically psychologically he may be burnt out on Marvin Johnson I don't think so though when you're talking about world championships it's hard to do this has been the slowest pace to the five rounds thus far under a minute to go and understandably so both needed to take kind of a rest good right hand by Amibi and Johnson countered again with a left and then missed a left uppercut boy Amibi will take one to land one won't he he's standing right there he's standing right in front of Johnson and by all records, that is a bad thing to do with a southpaw because you're wide open for his straight left hand. Neither of these fighters, I think, have taken one backward step. They have good right hand by Amibi. And, he and another one. Again. Now Amibi chasing him across the ring. Under 10 seconds to go, and he's got Marvin Johnson in just a wee bit of trouble here. But this round will end. Five rounds complete from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. We'll be back after this. Sam Nover and Murray Sutherland back live here in Indianapolis, round six. And as he has done every one of the preceding five rounds, Marvin Johnson almost running out of his corner. He is up a good 15 seconds before the start of the round. His handlers take the stool out of the ring, and he stands there and kind of dashes to the mid-ring to meet his opponent. Beebe's changed his fight plan a little bit in this round, Sam. He's doing a lot more dancing, moving around the ring. Maybe the corner of told him, hey, let's try and carry this guy into the later rounds. He's 32 years old. You've got a lot of age on him. And uh, let's try and tie, tie him out a little bit before we stand right in front of him. For the record, Marvin Johnson won his first WBA Light Heavyweight Championship way back in December of 1978 as he beat uh, Matty Parloff. But he lost his very next fight, as Murray talked about, to uh, the then Matt Franklin. So he had held it for such a short period of time, a matter of only four months and only one fight. He then won it again in 1979 from Victor Galendez. And on his very next encounter, he lost it to Eddie Gregory. And then he waited a very long time, from 1980 until February of 1986, before Marvin Johnson won it for an unprecedented third time, beating Leslie Stewart right here in Indianapolis. And this is his first title defense. And how desperately he wants to win it, Murray. As he, as he was quoted in the Indianapolis News, incidentally, in an excellent article written by Brian Settle yesterday, he said, you know, if I win this fight, I'm making 75,000 is all I'm getting for it. My next fight, maybe I can get 150,000. He said, but if I lose it, good left hand by Johnson again, but Amibi took it and stood right there. Amibi has taken everything that Johnson has to throw his way. Anyway, to finish, oh, an upper right hand by uh, Amibi. Jarred the head of Marvin Johnson. They have taken each other's best shots, one would think. 
and maybe is catching Johnson with some beautiful punches. A lesser guy would be gone by now, but Johnson being a true champion like he is, he's in there fighting for his title. And I think, like you were just referring to, a lot of it has to do with, hey, if I lose this title, I go back to fighting for the mediocre bucks. Yeah. If I retain this title with a good, impressive win over the number one contender, I'm guaranteed a good payday. And that's exactly what it is to finish the quote. He said, if I win, I can fight for maybe 150000 If I lose, I'm back to fighting for $1,000 a night. And, and he, he doesn't want to do that. Again, we alert our local stations. We'll be taking a break. And coming your way right after this round. This is the end of round six upcoming. Boy, they've taken everything, and they have delivered some vicious shots. Again, Amibi with a good right hand, and uh, Johnson counters with a left paw. We'll return after this word from your local station to the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana. Here we see the exchange of punches in the earlier rounds, and Amibi catching some beautiful punches from Johnson and then coming right back with some beautiful uppercuts and a shoulder there and some good right hands. We're back live again. This is the seventh round, scheduled for 15. Some people didn't think we'd get this far, and under the circumstances, the way they've delivered the blows, you kind of wonder how they have. Again, Amoebe in the blue trunks and Marvin Johnson, the champion in the white trunks. And while we've talked so much about Marvin Johnson wanting to win to be able to make more money, Amoebe has is going to lose money on this fight, as Handler's claim. He was originally guaranteed 30000 then after the postponement, they dropped...